Good morning, good morning, and welcome to yet another edition of Macro Now, set to be released every Monday morning. Today is Monday, November 9th, 2020. My name is Alexander Turo, Senior Market Strategist here at RJO Futures. We're going to be contextualizing the rates of change of growth and inflation, not only here domestically, but globally as well. So with that said, we'll start with the global currency market. You had the U.S. dollar just get smoked last week down towards its August 2020 lows, down another minus 1.9% on the week and remains bearish trend. You had the euro versus the U.S. dollar ramp up 1.9%, signaling medium term overbought on a 15-day basis within its bullish trend. You had the Japanese yen up another 1.3% versus the U.S. dollar remains bullish on both a 15-day as well as on the 90-day trend duration. You had the British pound versus the U.S. dollar appreciate 1.6% last week, confirm, and confirming its most recent uh, bullish trend breakout. And you had the Canadian dollar versus the U.S. dollar appreciate another 2.1% last week, confirming its recent uh, bullish trend breakout as well. And taking a look on the heels of this down dollar, uh, you had the cost of real American living uh, accelerate once again. Take a look at something like lumber, inflated 6.4% last week. Copper inflated another 3.5% last week. And soybeans inflated another 4.3% last week. Uh, and consequently as well, you had uh, on the back of this uh, down dollar, uh, had big tech uh, up. Uh, with U.S. Tech XLK leading U.S. equity sector styles at 9.7% on the week to 5.1% in the last month. Um, you have emerging market equities appreciate 6.6% last week to 6.7% in the last month. And you had Japanese stocks Nikkei 225 was up another 5.9% last week to plus 3.8% in the last month. And with that uh, Japanese stocks are now at the highest level that they've been since 91, which is in comparison to something like German stocks, they're down minus 3.3% last uh, month. Um, moving across assets, allocations here, taking a look at bond yields, those were down last week as well, uh, with the U.S. 10-year yield down six basis points to 0.82%. And so what you want to be looking at closely here is watching stock market volatility, uh, with the VIX going out on Friday, just north of 30. What you want to be taking a look at here is what we're seeing in in terms of similar sets, taking a look at uh, lower highs in commodities, higher lows in dollars, and higher lows in the VIX above the index's trend of 26. Uh, and so what that means is that right now, per the range, you have the most downside versus the upside in the S&P that you've had nearly all year. And so... You know, breaking that down a little bit further, you take a look at the NASDAQ volatility, which has a range of 31 by 45, which means if you take a look at, break it down a little further, look at the implied volatility or the vol of all, there are now double digit implied volatility discounts in all of the mega cap tech stocks and are going lower. Uh, take a look at Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, and Alphabet. And what that suggests is that bullish complacency and bearish capitulation is starting to get overstretched and this matters because tech is such a huge component of the index and so what you want to keep in mind here is that you don't want to be the uninformed volume at the edges of the range so uh, with that if you have any further questions or would like to divulge further please feel free to reach out to me directly otherwise uh, thank you for listening and keep your head about there